Okay, so welcome everybody to South Florida Rebbe Nachman Women's Learning Circle. Thank you for coming. Thank you to everybody who's here in person and thank you to everyone who is watching online now or in the future. Um, for those of you who were not here last week, welcome. And I have a gift for you before we leave. You got a book last week? Were you here? You were here last week. You got a book? I have a few, I have a gift for everybody. Um, wait, wait, wait. Awesome. So yeah, back from the studio break, we, um, we're we working on this teaching called Azamra. It's backwards. Azamra, it's Lukate Maharan, lesson number 282 in this little book. And if you go upside down, there's another teaching on the back called Aye, which means where. Azamra means I will sing and Aye means where. Mm -hmm. So everyone who comes in person gets a gift, a personal gift for me. Um, I would just want to back up for one minute and um, talk a little bit about why we need to be learning Rebbe Nachman nowadays in this generation. Um, I'll, I'll just go very briefly to spare those of you who were here last week or who already know. Rebbe Nachman was a great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, who Baal Shem Tov being the founder of Hasidut and the teachings of Rebbe Nachman are so important because he, he passed away 18, in 1810, only 200 years ago. And um, I'm gonna put this on silent, sorry guys. He passed away in 1810, so 200 years ago. His teachings are so profound, even back then, mm -hmm. he knew the psychology of his generation, our generation, future generations, and all of the Torah that he teaches really speaks to everyone in their own language, in, in their own psychological makeup. Um, he, as we said last week, he was a very learned person. Um, he, by the time he was 13, he was married at 13. By the time he was wow. 13, he knew the Talmud, he knew he knew Tehillim, he knew everything, Shas, he knew Pirkei Avot, he knew the Chumash, everything backwards and forwards, Kabbalah, inside out. And every time he spoke, he was a genius. Yeah. And every time he spoke, whether he was giving a, a Torah class or a lecture or whatever, or even in regular conversation, I didn't emphasize this last week, I want to emphasize it this week, when he was speaking I did say last week, it's as if he had all of the corpus of all of the teachings of our tradition right in front of him. And so he would grab something from Tehillim, a phrase from Tehillim, a word from Kumash, a word from Pirkei Avot. And all the things that he said would come together in like a brand new structure. It was kind of like he was an architect. And the, the building he was building was like new because he was taking a combination of materials that no other person before him did so all of his he 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 says he he teaches he says his torah is a new ancient path mm -hmm. it's a new ancient path mm -hmm. so it's like the torah being eternal but he had like a new spin it wasn't even a new spin on it it was just a new combination of all the different concepts and they come together to build a new structure so why do I feel that he's so important and so many people nowadays um, are so like getting onto his teachings because he really speaks to the human being mm -hmm. and he speaks to a person wherever they're at and his idea of, of serving Hashem is not from a lofty place. Like you don't have to be an educated person. You don't have to have go to yeshiva. You don't have to speak Hebrew. You don't even have to know how to read. Hebrew or, or learn anything about the Parsha, you just have to serve Hashem from your heart. And you have to be willing to go. We, people go to really, really low places. And his whole concept was that even in those really low, low places that people fall to inevitably, even God is even there. And that is a pretty new concept because normally back in the day, it was like, oh, you're religious, you keep Shabbat and, you know, you're, you're, 
your life source was coming from keeping the mitzvahs. And okay, we could say that, yes, it does. But people that don't know about mitzvahs and people who who are just living life and are just trying to make a living and just trying to stay married and raise their kids and do whatever they're doing, they, we fall, people fall, people fall down very low down. And Rebbe Nachman's whole idea was wherever you're falling to, even Hashem is there too. And so when you think about like the modern generation, you know, the psychology of our generation, how depression is so rampant and, you know, all of the modern day ills that we have, um, Rebbe Nachman just spoke to, speaks to every single person wherever they are. And he knows that, or he, he, he spoke that it's inevitable. We're going to fall. We're going to rise. We're going to fall. We're going to rise. We have to be we have to know that it's going to happen. And when we find ourselves down in the dumps, we have to be, it's a whole other teaching, but when we fall down, we have to remember how it was when we were high up and when we're high up, we have to remember how far we can go. So he gave us a lot of tools. He gives us a lot of tools to, you know, just be servants of Hashem and improve our lot and, and, you know, to get us out of situations that we're going to fall into and also sometimes bring us down a little bit from being so high up just so, being human just being human the human condition the Rebbe Nachman was like the modern like psychologist from the ninth from 1800s he's just like telling us what it is to be human so yes thank you um so last week so our teaching is um Likute Maharan this that's his his uh, what is it called? Uh, his magnum opus, Likte Maharan. It has about 300 teachings, more or less. And it, it's this book here that you can buy it online. It's got, it's not this book. It's like a million. There's probably like 15 volumes. And the teaching is number 282. It's called Azamra. It's probably, it's one of his most famous, Azamra and Ayeka. Those are like the two most famous teachings because they're so fundamental in how, how we can really live our best life. <laughs> and last week we talked about how, um, what the, the main point in our life is, I'll just read very briefly, like the first paragraph. Um, he says, no, a person must judge everyone favorably. Even someone who is completely wicked, it is necessary to search and find in him some modicum of good that in the little bit, he's not wicked. So that's basically, that's the whole teaching. Now he's got like X number of pages talking about like what that means and what the consequences are and what the result of when you live in a way that no matter what happens to you, you're just gonna look, you're gonna keep looking for the good point in the other person. Um, and by the same token, he's saying that you, judge everyone favorably. And when he, when that person looks like a sinner and he looks evil and he hurt you and he spoke bad about you or he, whatever he or she said or did to you, you need to keep looking for the next good point in that person. And even if you don't, even if the next point you see is still bad, you need to keep looking. And, you, and if you still can't find a good point, you need to keep looking because he says, how could it be that that person never did one good thing in their life. And by the same token, by the same way that you look at someone else like that and cut somebody else a break like that, we also have to look at ourselves in the same way. So when you make a mistake, do you, do you want a piece of paper? I can use the paper. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was enough. No, I think he's using that. Yeah, I'll just take a little. Okay, okay. Here, writing. put it right by the book. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Here, here, put it here, put it here. Put it here. From the kitchen. Yeah, if there is one. It's like it's like human being coming from God. There's always something good in them. They're not completely. There's somewhere where they're. Don't you like it here and take it there? Yeah, sure. From the shame that's in them. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's yeah. that's his point. Like. Even if somebody you're in an interpersonal relationship with a family or friend or an enemy, um, you're always going, there's always a little spark of godliness in him, but he's talking, he's talking more about on a day-to-day -day basis, because I don't think I tried, but I don't think people in general are walking around saying like, I'm looking for Hashem, <laughs> not literally looking for Hashem. You know, I, I try to, yes. I try. 
but really his teaching is like somebody's gonna like proverbially slap you in the face and you are gonna try and you're gonna you know give him the benefit of the doubt and if that didn't look right you're gonna keep looking and you're just gonna keep looking with the with the little bit of strength that you have left you're gonna keep looking for that last little good point and right in that point when you find that good point in that person that other wicked person he's gone that person disappeared. You totally changed their whole identity. So talking about recreating reality and the power of attraction, we talked about last week how everything is according to your vision of how you look at things. You can either be stuck and like hold grudges and keep looking at people like what they did and what they said and how they, how I felt, how they made me feel and all that. Or you can, you know, as Rebbe Nachman says, just, just keep, just keep turning, just keep turning the dial a little bit and just look at the other, the next thing and the good next sides. thing and the next thing. So you're going to find a good side. And by the same token, you need to look at yourself in the same way. Because even you could say to yourself, okay, so let's say I messed up. Let's say like I didn't, let's say I was rude to somebody. And then, you know, so you feel really bad. And sometimes your heart breaks because you feel so bad that you, that, you know, that you did something. And so like, you don't want to continue driving yourself down, you know, into down into the dumps, but people do fall down into the dumps, but his um, remedy is always look for the good point And even in yourself. And when you think to yourself, is it, how could it be that I never did a mitzvah that I never did a good point that I never did anything good so you ask yourself even when you're down in the dumps and all depressed you just have to keep looking for that good point in yourself and then you could find yourself at, at the point where it's like okay so I did that I did do that good thing okay I did do that that I did help that person and then you could find yourself going oh but I helped that person but really it's because I wanted to look good like I wanted the people in the community to see what a nice person I am and then we go and we beat ourselves up again and he says don't do that every time you see something good don't don't like go even lower and try to like sabotage yourself you're always going to find if you keep going and with a little bit and a little bit and a little bit more you're always going to find something that's going to that's going to tip the scales to the side of good, and in that place, you've totally recreated your own identity or the other person's identity, whether whoever we're talking about. So, um, so it's beautiful teaching, really, and it's foundational because it really, when you think about loving the ahafta l'reacha kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself, you really can't do that if you don't have this understanding. If you don't have this understanding of cutting people a break and finding the good point, I mean, you have to drop grudges, basically. He didn't say that, I said it. You have to look around the corner and just look for that other good point. How are we all, as Jews, how are we gonna love each other as we love ourselves if we're not willing to like leave that bad point behind of that person and just keep trying a little harder and just overcoming the doubts and the negativity and the anger and the frustration and all that it's he's just giving us you know he's giving us a medicine a remedy for that so this line is from Tehillim it says in in yet a little bit in yet a little bit the wicked man is not, the wicked person is not. You will reflect upon his place and he will not be there. If you find a good point in him, that other person that you were so mad at, he's gone, he or she is gone, disappeared because now all you see is that good point. You, all you see is a good point. And then likewise, a person must find a good point within himself. And again, is it possible that I didn't do any one little teeny tiny good thing in this world? Well, that little teeny tiny good thing that it's all covered up with all the crap that you did, that little teeny tiny pinpoint is that is where we want to focus. And in the, in the aspect of in yet a little bit, the wicked man is not, you will reflect upon this place and he will not be there. So he will disappear. And likewise, he must go on searching until he finds in himself yet another good thing. And although this good thing too is mixed with much impurity, 
Still, he must extract some good point from there as well. Indeed, he must go on searching and gathering further good points. So you found a good point in the person. And then, oh, well, let me look for another good point. And let me look for another good point. And before you know it, you have a whole new person. And then he says, and it is through this that melodies are made. Mm-hmm. So he brings the concept of, it's beautiful, yes. he brings the concept of music. And as is explained elsewhere, the aspect of playing a musical instrument is the aspect of gathering the good ruach or spirit from the, from the spirit of gloom and depression. And he refers to his other teaching. The principle is that music of holiness is extremely lofty, as is known. In essence, music is made through the separation of good from evil by selecting and gathering the good points from the bad. Melodies and songs are created. Study there well. Therefore, by not letting himself fall, but reviving himself by searching and seeking until he finds in himself some good points, gathering and separating those good points from the evil and impurity within him or within the other person. Through this, melodies are made as explained above. Then he's able to pray and sing and give praise to God. So think about how sometimes when everything is going wrong and every Everywhere you look, something's wrong. The dogs messed up the house. My kids don't visit me. You know, (laughs) this and that and my ex-husband and this and this and this. And you could look everywhere and things look pretty bleak. But when you start picking one good point and another good point and another good point, another good point, you're making music. You're making Mm -hmm. music. And that is basically, if you think about a piano keyboard, you can't play all the all the the notes at the same time. You have to pick one note, you have to pick another note, you have to pick another note, and according to how the notes are that you pick, that's the sound, the beauty of the sound that you're going to make. Um, therefore, by not letting himself fall, but reviving himself, by searching and seeking until he finds in himself some good points, gathering and separating the good points from the evil and impurity within him. Remember, we have like, we're we're a mixture, we're a mixture of everything. Through this, by picking the good points, melodies are made. Then he's able to pray and sing and give praise to God. So talking about relationship with God, we need to, we need to be able to come to some point where we at least find a little bit of good in ourselves. Rebbe Nachman was very much concerned about people not falling into depression. Even back then, 200 years ago, nowadays we know what kind of problem we have with depression. And his, his, I'll just keep reading, for it is known that when a person becomes depressed over his gross physicality and evil deeds, and he sees how very distant he truly is from holiness, it generally makes him completely incapable of praying. He cannot even open his mouth at all due to the magnitude of the depression, sadness, and heaviness that come over him when he sees how exceedingly distant he is from God. However, if he revives himself by means of the aforementioned suggestion, that is, although he knows within himself that he committed evil deeds and numerous sins and he is exceedingly distant from God, yet he nevertheless searches and seeks until he finds some remaining good point in himself, as explained. And he brings himself vitality and joy through this. For it is certainly right that a person feel ever increasing joy over every good point stemming from the holiness of Israel that he yet finds in himself. So there's always another good point. There's always another good point, And there's always some clutch. We always have some clutch of how to pick ourselves up from when we're down in the mud. And it becomes a little more easier the more we practice it and do it. Yeah, you, you redeem yourself. Yeah. Redeem yourself to yourself. Redeem yeah. yourself to the to your relationship it with the needs, creator. It needs a lot more uh, thing to redeem to, to find things in yourself than judging other people. Mm-hmm. You always criticize yourself, and that makes you very 
our call it with your relationship with other people. With other people, with the career, with yourself. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. is, then when he revives himself and brings himself to joy through this, as explained above, he's then able to pray, sing, and give praise to God. This is the aspect of, quote, I will sing to God be'odi, with the little I have left. And this is from Psalms. So that's the whole, the crux of this whole teaching is, I will sing to God with the little bit I have left. It comes from, from Psalms, specifically be'odi, with, by means of the od, by the means of like a little bit more that I find in myself. The aspect of, in yet a little bit, the wicked man is not, as we said before. By means of this point, I'm able to sing and give praise to God, as explained. That's Azamra. In Hebrew, az Azamer. Azamer, I will sing Azamra. Sure, yeah. Azamer is like a tune or a song. In fact, I'm sorry. No, go, please. Balashento changed everything they used to pray inside the, uh, uh, the room, inside the synagogue. And he changed everything. He said, to pray to God, we have to go out, sing, and dance. And that's how his movement took uh, place. He that's wanted everyone his, to go outside and sing and clap and dance. That's what he did. He took everybody to the forest, to the flowers, to the trees. And they pray over there. He said, that's God's uh, creation. Yeah. We have to see it and be happy. And that's, that, that's how he started his movement. It's his... Father. Great, great grandfather. Great this is the great grandson yeah. of the Balshanto. Yeah, the, the, the same, the, the way you're reading it, it makes me remember the Balshanto. The teaching. Yeah. Okay. This is it. Um, and this is, I will sing, specifically, I will sing the songs and melodies that are made by gathering the good points. Rebbe Nachman of Blessed Memory cautioned us, this is Last week I explained Rebbe uh, Nachman didn't write any of his own teachings. His main disciple, Rebbe, Rebbe Natan, or Reb Nassan, if you're Yiddish, he wrote down everything. So Rebbe Natan right now is saying that Rebbe Nachman of blessed memory cautioned us to live by his, this teaching for it is a major foundation for anyone who wishes to draw closer to God and not lose his eternal reward completely, God forbid. In most cases where people are far from God, the main reason for this is sadness and depression. They fall into depression because they see for themselves the great harm they have caused through their actions. Each person commensurate with what he himself knows of his heart's affliction and his anguish. This is in the year 1800, guys. That's wow. what I'm saying. The wow. year 1800. At that time, he understood the depression and so forth. At that time, nobody knew anything. Nobody knew anything. Just people would just walk around being gloom all day yeah. long. Due mm -hmm. to this, they become depressed and most of them despair of themselves completely. As a result, they pray without any concentration and do not even do what they are still capable of. Think about how when you get depressed, when you get in this situation, obviously you have the energy to get up out of your chair. But when you have this blanket over your eyes, you can't even do what you are still capable of. Yeah. So this teaching is so, to me, it's priceless. It really helped me overcome a lot of personal <laughs> struggles by deciding that I was just going to look at the good point. And if I couldn't find anything good, I would just keep looking until I found a good point in the other person and in myself too. Thus, a person has to be very sagacious in this matter. You have to be a sage for although all his depressions are due to the evil deeds he did indeed commit, right? Because we all make mistakes and do things that are not really the way we really are deep inside. Still, that he fell into depression and that sadness and melancholy descends upon him because of this is nothing but the work of the evil one, the evil inclination who discourages him in order to defeat him completely, God forbid. One must therefore be very resolved to live by this teaching to each time search and seek within himself a little bit of good and good points, etc., as explained above. Through this, he will revive himself and bring himself joy and he will still look forward to God's help. He'll be able to pray and sing and give praise to God in the aspect of, I will sing to God with the little I have left. 
And because of this, he will merit to genuinely return to God, as explained above. Oh, this breaks down all barriers. Amen, right? Amen. Breaks down just, all barriers. I know what you're it just breaks down all barriers. <laughs> when you give yourself a break and you do the work, it's heavy, it's hard work. People you really have to work. Hard. You have to work at it. But think about yeah. interpersonal relationships. Think about marriages and raising kids and jobs and all the struggles we have, the, just the struggles of being human. And here we have a teaching that says, yes, everybody's human, but everybody also has a good point too. And when you're able to break through all those, you know, those oh, other oh points, God. you are, you know, you're really tipping the scales. As he says, that you're tipping the scales. Know too that someone who is capable of making these melodies, of gathering the good points that are to be found in each Jew, even a Jewish sinner, as explained above, because they say a Jewish sinner is Jewish, is still Jewish. So he can lead the communal prayers. For one who leads the communal prayers is called the messenger of the people. He must be sent by all the people. He must gather every good point that is to be found in each of the congregants. And all the good points are merged in him, in the communal leader, so that when he stands up, so that when he stands up to pray, it is with all this good. So I'm going to skip ahead because it's a little on the technical side. I mean, it's it's actually a beautiful teaching. He's talking about the Chazan. When the Chazan stands, think about Yom Kippur, and the Chazan stands in front of the con congregation, and the the Chazan is really representing, he's gathering up all the prayers of all the congregation. He's gathering up all the good points of the congregation and bringing up all the prayers up to Hashem. So a Chazan who is praying on behalf of the congregation really needs to be practicing this lesson. And um, there, was, uh, there was a story told about this one rabbi who, the, the Chazan, and that every time he would walk into a prayer service on Shabbat or the holidays or whatever, he would go around and look in the eye of every single person in the room before he would start the prayers because he wanted to like make the connection and probably like put aside the not so good stuff and just take the good point and then from there begin prayers. So imagine the next time you walk into a shul just try to connect with a chazan and let the chazan take your prayers up with him. And, you know, as a group, that's a cool thing to do. Know too that in each and every generation, there is a shepherd who is the aspect of Moshe, the faithful shepherd, Moshe Rabbeinu. This shepherd makes a sanctuary. And know the young school children receive the undefiled breath of their mouths from this sanctuary the undefiled breath of their mouths from the sanctuary. Therefore, when a, a young child first begins to read and enter the study of Torah, he begins with Vayikra, which means, and he called to Moshe. The word Vayikra is written with a small aleph because the book of Vayikra speaks of the completion of the sanctuary's erection. It was then that God called to Moshe and began speaking to him from the sanctuary. This is why the young children begin from there, because it is from there that they receive the breath of their mouths, as explained above. And from there, the children begin to read and enter into Torah study. The, yeah, nice. go. <clears throat> um, okay, so I, in school, so, um, when a kid comes into my office, a child comes into my office, it's like, and I don't know this other than I'm led, and I can really feel God just leading me in my work. Um, they say they come to oh, my teacher. Wait, wait, give us the background. You are a teacher? No, I'm a crisis specialist. Crisis specialist, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I counsel kids. Okay. And I, so I see kids from all kinds, all walks of life. Okay. And when they're angry or when they, you know, okay, say the issues with a teacher. I did, I, I just knew to say, I said, okay, let's do this. You really hate this teacher. She's not nice to you. Da -da 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 -da. Whatever could say about that. I said, I'm going to give you a homework. And they like it because they like me. And they, a challenge. Go, what is that, Miss Chandler? 
I want, let's say it's Tuesday today, I want you in my office on Friday, and I want you to see if you could find one thing, I don't care if it's nail polish, that you could like with a magic. Mm. If you could just find one little thing, and kids love challenges. I mean, there are keys. Different angles. Some are young, some are adolescent, or middle school, or middle school. So, but everybody kind of likes a challenge, and if they like you as a person, they really want to take it on. And sure enough, they would come back a few days later. Say, well, okay, I don't like her, but I did find nail polish, or I did notice she had a pretty room, or she had a pretty thing, whatever. It didn't matter. She dressed next. And then I asked her, you know, just, um, how does it feel in your body when you're buying something like that in the person? Oh, bringing the seeds to them. And hopefully, you know, working well enough with kids and people just to plant those seeds. And... Nice. Mm -hmm. well, and they feel it, they feel it in their bodies. They have to. Well, not everyone, but yeah, they get it. And we talk about because they'll come back, you know, and we find more things and more things. And then I just want them to connect to their body and where it would feel like less heavy, less restricted. I was going to say constricted. Yeah, less constricted. Yeah. Right. Like more like you can breathe a little more. Yeah. And yeah. then you can become aware of that. You know, like us, you know, they're learning like we are. There's a lot of talk about how, oh, there's the dog. Um, oh, I'm going to go. No, it's okay. Um, how in last week's Parsha, was it last week's Parsha that the Jews couldn't get out of Mitzrayim, or maybe it was two weeks ago, the Jews couldn't leave Mitzrayim because they couldn't breathe. They were like so constricted. They were, had shortness of breath, of breath, kotzer ruach. Their their spirit, their breath was like they just couldn't. They couldn't breathe. They couldn't see. They couldn't. Their amuna was totally shut down. Like they just couldn't see the future. They couldn't see the possibility. So here's another another example. We just have to keep looking. We have to keep looking. Is it okay with them? You get you being more happy. You being more. Um, mm, I can. What the hell is it? Huh? Driven. Driven. Yeah. Joyful. Joy. Joyful and driven, like to do better oh. things because you know God is watching you all the time. When you have the moon and you believe in God, your life is completely different than somebody that doesn't have anything. And every day is the same day for them. They're not looking to show, I mean, they don't have any challenges in life, in anything, in themselves, in the in others, in in, in the world, in, in, in general. Do you mean they don't, don't have, have goals? Lemona, huh? You mean they don't have goals or they don't have challenges? No, what they do don't mean? have they don't have the the the, the joyous, the happiness. Smart. Yeah, like we do, you know, we always, you know, for every little thing we get, to Hashem, to for this, for that, mm -hmm. for that, the appreciation and the things that we always see, we don't have this, for them it's just another day, it's coming, they, it's not they, they take the Jews from, granted, they have no, no, from the faith they have in God. They are saturated, they are happy because they that's why you have them or not. Yeah. yeah, but that's what I'm saying. We, we talked about they somebody, have, they have a goal, they want to elevate, they they say they, they accept more because they try to get more and more in their religion, in their, their reading, in their prayer. Yeah, that's what I said. And that's made them uh, well, a better person, other people. Yeah, but I I thought you said somebody that does not said somebody that does not have it now doesn't have the happiness and the the, the things that we have because they take everything for granted. Right. We don't take nothing for granted. We thank Hashem every day mm -hmm. by prayers, by talking to Him, by reading, by understanding. Mm -hmm. By it's different. It's completely different life when you don't have any muna. It's different life. Really? Probably because that is even more important.
What is that? That's probably why this is even more important because there are people who, I guess, you know, we all lose. I've lost faith or hope or questioned things and, you know, I've sinned and I've done things or I beat myself up. <laughs> we all like all do. That's stuff. right. Which we, we all be that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's of course. But when, when you have the Amuna, you beat yourself less. That's, that's right. What I'm it's saying. like you have tools to pick yourself up. Exactly. Uh, it's you like, believe in Hashem and you believe that the better right. thing gonna come to you. Just be patient. It's gonna come. And thank God I don't get this, but I got that. You know. You know when you have the Amuna, when something happened to you, really, I'm not kidding. You said thank God, even if God forbid, God forbid, or nobody, your child, your this. I see that the, 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 the mother's soldiers, they lose their son and they say, you know what they say? God God gave me, God took from me, you know? Yeah. And they say, we don't have another land. We fight for our land. My kids fight for, I'm proud of them. They don't say, oh, they, you know, of course they say, but with the emunah, you take everything differently. Mm -hmm. Somebody that doesn't have the emuna, uh, excuse my language, fuck Israel, fuck the, 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 the president, mm -hmm. the, they don't know how to accept things. Mm -hmm. There is no acceptance. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's they are bittered. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you have the emuna, even for that, you take a shift. You can believe it sounds, it sounds not logical, it sounds not normal. But I'm telling you, you hear those parents saying, we don't have a different land. This is our land. This is our country. My son fight for this land, for this country. And that's why he's not in this world anymore. He was a, he was a hero. My son was the hero. She doesn't talk bad about something. Yeah. She's still proud of him. And she says, you know, the gifts and mm -hmm. she uses that as an impetus for to do more to be more grateful uh, th this is just a small example That's but when you have this is the worst thing can that can happen to you right there is no worse oh, more worse thing than to lose your children every the world can go upside down but your children are the only thing that are the most important for you the fact that they send their children to war to, for their land. It's not their choice. Big, no, it is, it's it's not, not their choice. It's it is, by... It is it's, their choice. No, it's not by choice because this is by... Uh, not by force. But no, you by, must by law. serve. In Israel, they have to You go must to the serve. It's not, they're they're not serve. asking you. Even going to war. Not even going to war. Even go, it's not a, a, a choice. Is if they send you the... The South Shmona, I don't know how you, I don't know how you said it. They accept to go because they believe in that land. They believe in their yeah, but, but 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 this is something of what you said. If the parents are sending, it's not their choice. They're not they're not they're not being asked. Is by uh, no choice. They they it's know, by uh, how do you say it? By not to go. It's it's by law. It's right. the law of by Israel. Law. It's yes. not choice. So let's let's not see if choice. we can get back on on topic here and talk about the the breath of the children, the breath of the children, the pure holy breath of the children, the tzaddikim of the generation without exception are the aspect of a shepherd. For within each one of them is an aspect of Moshe, and each yeah. one of them in his own aspect makes an aspect of a sanctuary from which the young children receive the breath of their mouths, <clears throat> excuse me, as explained above. And each tzaddik commensurate with his aspect, the aspect of the sanctuary that he makes, likewise has young children who receive from there. Thus it is that every tzaddik of the generation without exception has a specific number of children who receive the breath of their mouths from him each tzaddik commensurate with his aspect as explained above. This is the aspect of what our sages of blessed memory said, 
young children are snatched away because of the sin of the generation, as it is said, and graze your young goats by the shepherd's tents. The young children are taken as surety, surety for the shepherds. So each tzaddik is responsible for the children of the generation and certain children are going to one tzaddik and certain children the other tzaddik and the breath goes through there. However, to know all this, to know of each and every tzaddik, which, which are the young children who relate to him and how much they receive from him and to know all the aspects involved in this and the generations that will come from them to the very end, no, one who can make the aforementioned melodies can know all this. So a person who can pick the good points of each and every person can bring the children along with them. And, it's, and it, honestly, it's not like making up a story or saying, okay, yeah, you know, I like that about this. You know, and even telling people, you know, this is what I like. And these, you know, a real thing, a real quality that they may never have even known. So it's not nothing that you want to make up. You want to really find that real quality or that real gift that person has to give to the world and themselves, right? Think about when you go to like a very holy person. Mm -hmm. They look in your eyes and you feel like they saw your whole soul. No, go ahead. right. My rabbi, well, I have a rabbi. Do you remember Mark Labowitz? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's amazing. He does his faith. He does. He's amazing. Like, I mean, he's from the lineage of rabbis. And his mother was even a rabbi. Huh. Yeah. With that being said, um, but he's the type of person that when you walk into that temple for Shabbos, he, you think he's talking just to you. He's got this mm. gift when he speaks. And you, you would swear, no, he's just talking to me. And it, he's present. The magnet. He the magnet. to you. But, but everybody feels that kind of energy from that person. It's just so it's it's powerful. Pardon me? Which, I, I don't. It's called Temple Adapter. And it's really a renewal. It's not. It's, not, it's just takes old Judaism and kind of what you're doing right now, you're trying to bring into this generation and, and make, make, so make we it can relevant, make, make it relevant of it. Yes. Okay. You're great at this. <laughs> no, it's not me. This is Rebbe well, yeah. I'm reading from the book and we're talking, <laughs> we're applying it. Um, so, and this is the deeper meaning of what our sages of blessed memory said in the Mishnah. In truth, they said the chazan sees where the young children are reading. So the teacher knows, like if the teacher's walking around the room, the teacher knows where each person's holding, where each of his students is reading, like how advanced they are, how not advanced wow. they are. Yeah, isn't that brilliant? The chazan, quote unquote, one who can make the aforementioned melodies, he can be the cantor, the messenger of the people, leader of the communal prayers, as explained above. He sees and knows where the young children are reading, from which tzaddik they receive the breath of their mouths, through whom they read and enter into the study of Torah as explained above. And that is the teaching of Azamra. Mm -hmm. I will sing. Hold on.